Hey, Julian Kraus here, and I recently upgraded from the free version of DaVinci Resolve to the studio version. And I wanted to know if there's a noticeable difference in performance in both playback and rendering between the two versions. So the question is, does the studio version improve the performance? And if yes, is it worth the upgrade? I want to point out that the studio version grants access to quite a few features like noise reduction, lens correction and many other GPU accelerated resolve effects. But in this video I'm focusing on the differences in playback, editing and rendering performance between the free and studio version. As I usually don't shoot my videos with an ARRI or RED camera, I'm primarily interested in how the free and studio version handles more consumer encoded H.264 and H.265 footage. And that's what all my tests are based on. I used four different flavors of 4K footage shot with my Fuji X-T3. The first clip is H.264, 100 megabits, long gop, 8 bit. The second one is H.264, 400 megabits, all intra, 8 bit. The third clip is H.265, 100 megabits, long gop, 10 bit. And the fourth one is H.265, 400 megabits, all intra, 10 bit. Before we dive into the tests, let me quickly give you an overview of the used hardware. My PC uses an Intel i7-8700K, it also has a 32GB of RAM and an NVIDIA GTX 1080. The OS and Resolve are installed on a Samsung 960 Pro M.2 SSD and the footage I used uh, was also on this fast drive, so there shouldn't be any bottleneck here. Okay, let's start out with DaVinci Resolve in the free version. And here you can see that I'm on a 4K timeline. Uh, I don't use any optimized media and the proxy mode is also set to off. In the preferences, we can see that I have selected my GTX 1080. It's set to the CUDA processing mode and this is manually selected. Okay, let's start with a simple playback test. To stress the codec a bit, I used the industry standard Windows Media Player. I simply filled the screen with the visualization. So we're going to have a look at the dropped frames here. On the top left you can see the frame counter and uh, well if this is showing a red sign then we're dropping frames here and you can also see this in the viewer window. So the interesting points are going to be on the cutovers, so when one clip goes to the next one, because there is where you usually experience a drop of frames. And as you can see, it's going quite smoothly. Uh, there are occasions where you will experience some dropped frames, and this will, for example, be in this clip here. This is the H.265 clip with 400 megabits. Now in this test I'm jumping around with the playhead on the timeline and I want to see how fast DaVinci Resolve updates the image. And as you can see it's roughly half a second to about one second from the moment I click on the timeline somewhere. So that's taking some time. Here I'm now testing the scrubbing performance. I'm simply taking the playhead and dragging it over the timeline in a relatively consistent motion and this should normally result in a picture that's scrubbing along with the playhead. But as you can see this is not very smooth here and we only get like an update every every second or so. So I think it's safe to say that the scrubbing performance of H.265 and H.264 4K material in the free version is not that great. So here we're going to have a look at the CPU and GPU utilization. You can see that with the long op H.264 footage, the CPU is around, well, 40% and the GPU is hardly working at all. With the 400 megabits H.264 footage, the CPU has to work quite a bit harder and it's now at 80%, but the GPU is hardly doing anything. When we go over to the H.265 footage here, you can see we once again drop a bit down because this is the lower bitrate footage. We are around 50%, which is a bit more than the H.264 footage. And again, the GPU does hardly anything. And lastly, when we're in the H.265 footage with the 400 megabits, we can see that the CPU has to work quite a bit again 
and is at 80% and GPU unsurprisingly does essentially nothing. So depending on the playback clip the CPU has to do less or more work but the GPU is never really utilized here. Okay let's jump over to the studio version. Here again we don't use any optimized media and the proxy mode is set to off. Our timeline is set to 4k and in the preferences we've selected the GTX 1080 with the CUDA mode. Okay, let's start with playback again. As you can see, uh, we're not dropping any frames and our CPU utilization is very low with the H.264 footage. The GPU, on the other hand, is working a bit here. With the higher bitrate H.264 footage, the CPU starts to work quite a bit at 60% utilization, but the GPU is still very low. And with the H.265 footage, we're down to like 20% CPU usage, but the GPU starts to have to work a bit with around 30% utilization here. And with the high bitrate all I H.265 footage, you can see that the CPU is still doing hardly anything, but the GPU is now at around 30 to 40 percent. So with the studio version we can already see that the GPU is utilized for video playback which results in a smoother video playback performance. Now this is the same scrubbing test that I did before in the free version and as you can see this is much smoother. It's of course not perfect so we're still getting some dropped frames but scrubbing through the footage results in a much more fluid motion of the video on top. And this is true for pretty much all the clips, so regardless whether it is H.264 or H.265 footage. The H.264 and H.265 footage with the higher bit rates uh, seem to be the most distressing for the PC still. Interestingly, the H.264 footage, uh, which you would expect to have less CPU utilization, uh, actually has the most and the H.265 footage with the 400 megabits is um, scrubbing pretty smooth here. And here we have the test where I'm jumping around with the playhead in the timeline a bit. And as you can see, um, the moment I click on it, it takes about, sometimes it's instantaneous, sometimes it's just about, well, quarter of a second, and then the video starts playing. So this jumping around is also quite a bit faster than in the free version. Okay, let's have a look at rendering performance. Here you can see the free version rendering the four clips which I showed before. You can also see that we are rendering with between 15 to like 20 frames a second, uh, depending on the clip we are currently on in this render. Of course, the whole encoding is done by the CPU here, and you can see that it is pretty much pinned to 100% and the GPU is hardly doing anything. So the whole render in the free version is done with the CPU. The studio version with the native encoder also shows the same behavior. As you can see, the CPU is of course maxed out, so at 100%, and the GPU is hardly doing anything, but we are rendering a bit faster with between, let's say 15 to 21 frames a second. So there is a slight performance gain in the studio version with the native encoder compared to the free version. And now you can see the rendering with the NVIDIA encoder. And this is of course much, much faster. As you can see, we are rendering with around 60 frames a second. This is of course fluctuating a bit depending on the clip we are currently on, but this is easily three times the speed compared to the native encoder. The CPU is only around 25%. And the GPU is doing all the heavy lifting here, sitting around 60% or so. Interestingly, the H.264 with 400 megabits um, stresses the CPU to 100% and the GPU utilization goes down a bit. But this still renders quite a bit faster than the native encoder. So all in all, the NVIDIA encoder is simply much faster than the native encoder. To make this a bit more of a real-world test, I also rendered a complete project of mine. And with the free version, this comes in at a render time of 11 minutes and 33 seconds. The studio version with the native encoder achieved a render time of 9 minutes and 39 seconds. And with the NVIDIA encoder, I rendered this project in 6 minutes and 3 seconds. 
So here you can already see that the studio version has a slight performance benefit even with the native encoder compared to the free version and the Nvidia encoder of course increases the performance even further. Now does the Nvidia encoder deliver the same quality as the native encoder? Well that's a topic for a whole nother video but I have to say that if there are any differences they are very small. One thing I did note though is that when you render with the NVIDIA encoder the file size is consistently about 15% bigger than with the native encoder. But I think this is only a small trade-off for the much faster rendering speed. So let's answer the questions I asked in the beginning. Does DaVinci Resolve Studio improve the playback, editing and rendering performance? Well I think you saw the results and the studio version clearly improves the performance. The playback and editing performance improves noticeably and the rendering performance increases substantially with the NVIDIA encoder. Now you might still ask yourself whether you should upgrade to the studio version or stick with the free version and in my opinion this is a very clear it depends. If making videos is your hobby and you're primarily working on passion projects then the free version is an excellent way to edit your videos. The performance it provides is already very good especially if you work with 1080p material. If on the other hand you work with 4K or even higher res footage, you produce videos on a regular basis or you simply want to increase the speed at which you can edit and deliver videos, then I highly recommend the upgrade. With the studio version the editing experience is quite a bit smoother with H.264 and H.265 encoded footage and the rendering performance increases substantially. The nice thing is that you can start out with the free version and if at any point you decide that you need a slight boost in editing and rendering performance, you can simply upgrade to the studio version. Please give this video a thumbs up if this helped you out and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. That's it for now, I will see you all in the next one.